Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome everybody to our Okta Developer Day 2023. It's exciting to be here uh, again this year, of course. Each year we want to bring you, all of our developers, an update on the latest in identity space. And last year we focused on passwordless, why using passwords is an outdated approach, what you should be doing, how you can get rid of it, or move from, the, uh, from password uh, to passwordless. And today we will focus on continuing that journey and the theme and work on what are the technology and platform features available for you to take on the passwordless journey. So in today's digital edge, age, our identity is constantly uh, at risk. As individuals, we share a lot of personal information online, our sensitive information, our personal information is the biggest target of data breaches, identity thefts, and other malicious activities. So to protect this information and uh, identity, security, and privacy are more important than ever. Today we'll explore all of that and what you can do to secure identity through easy to use SDKs, attack prevention capabilities, but also as developers, what you can use in, in uh, using our platform and authentication flow to uh, integrate in your system and the larger application, right? So to kick that off, as you saw Abby walked us through this, you will see with every talk track, uh, what it says in so many words is anything future looking that we talk about is subject to change, right? And with that, for those who I haven't much met yet, and I would love to, uh, I'm Bhavna Singh. I'm the CTO of uh, Customer Identity at Okta. And every day, I and my team work to help build a world where everyone can safely use any technology. Our goal is to empower developers to take control of identity so that you can better protect your users' sensitive information and provide a secure user experience. So as a developer and a citizen of the world, our identity, as I said, is under constant attack. In my personal life, I'm constantly having to enter my personal information in every day in different sites that I'm doing business with, to order food, to uh, buy tickets for an event, or even to chat my, with my family. So each site has an onerous, password filling, personal information filling path, and uh, all of this information is going somewhere and getting stored, and this is a lot of personal information for all of us users. So if I re read and get an email about data breaches or anything else, I try to be on top of it and make changes. And this is a thing for all users around because we need to be on top of it. So as developers, what can we do for our users to make sure that these sites, uh, if they get compromised, how we can you know, support our users. Or, first of all, let's not compromise our sites, right? So let's, let's talk about that. Let's explore what it means to take control of identity and how we can help using our platform to take control of identity. And I think there are two sides to it. The developer side, and then, of course, the user side. As developers, as you can see, we are the owners of the system that works with the login technology and, of course, stores user information. So we, to secure this entrusted information by our users, we need to implement the latest identity standards to stay ahead of attacks. We need to scale the system as our user base is growing, and we need to make sure that using the system, we are granting the right access to the right person. It does feel like uh, all of this that we need to do, we also need to deliver fast, securely, fully compliant, and, and it, you know, at times it does feel like we have to be magicians to make it all happen uh, in one go. Hence, as developers, it's very important that the identity platform is also providing us an easy-to-use APIs and well-documented SDKs. So those are all the story, that, that is all the story on the developer side, but on the user side, the story is also kind that's similar. You know, we want our data to be handled securely and our privacy to be guaranteed. So we want securely, uh, uh, we want to log in securely and make sure the, into each application and make sure that the, the login capability or the login is without any friction, no, no, no complexity. And of course, we would prefer that to use our credentials or social logins wherever possible because we already own it and we don't have to keep remembering for every side. And of course, Privacy is top of mind, right? So as an identity platform, we want to provide all of these capabilities to our developers so that they can offer these capabilities to their users. So how do we do that? 
when it, but before I start talking about how, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what are our developer uh, pain points? And, I, and while I hear a lot of stories again and again around this space, I want to share three today. Uh, one common one, of course, is that you have to make some code change in your login capability, and um, you have to make some, you know, a few lines of code change in one and few, and few others in, in, few, in, in other place. But at the same time, you uh, hear from your colleagues that the last time someone touched that code, production went down. So now you're nervous about, you know, what changes and, and should you really make change uh, into your login code base. There's another story that I hear which is about uh, using an open source library, right? Um, uh, teams use open source library in their identity implementation and it wasn't standards based or it, wasn't it hasn't been updated for the last two years. And then now changing this into the new latest update uh, setup or standard, that's quite an investment. It's months and months of work. So, um, of course, business doesn't want to invest in work that is uh, causing more uh, login box, you know, because login box works. And why invest more in something that's already working? And the last story I want to share here, of course, is uh, the many of you must have uh, have to work in the space of like, okay, let's integrate MFA, right? And as you're working on integrating MFA, um, you ha don't have a security or a compliance partner to guide you and help you understand, are you doing it right? Are you integrating it right? And as you do that, you go ahead, you roll out your MFA implementation, and when an issue is identified with it, the blame game starts, right? These are all the stories that you would relate to, you have ex uh, experience with, you had to deal with, and so much more. So if these stories I just shared are familiar and relatable, uh, then you're in the right place. That is not a new problem, but today we will share about how you can overcome them. You don't have to deal with it, and our platform has evolved further for you to take advantage uh, to secure identity for your users. So we'll start with diving into authentication as a service space. Our platform has started with actually working on authentication or solving for authentication and is now a well-understood approach. Then we'll move into authorization as a service, which is a new and growing capability. We rolled out our authorization uh, solution last year, and it's part of our, uh, and actually open source part of it for our developers to engage with. And lastly, we'll talk about and share our active work in the verifiable credentials space, which is an emerging market. So let's dive into the first one, and let's start with authentication. So, Here's how we'll break it down for today's conversation. The login capability, which is allowing users to log in with any factor, hence universal login. And then we'll dive into the security and privacy forward features because the security and privacy aspects are core to authentication. If you remember, we took this journey last year's, in, in last year's dev days, and I'm, I'm bringing it up again and again to create enough FOMO so you go if you haven't, you have to go watch that uh, uh, session uh, from the last year's dev day. It's all on our site. So, of course, as I said, you know, offering security and privacy forward features out of the box doesn't work if the box limits you uh, on our developers when implementing your authentication flow. So we, we all know no two applications are similar. You, ha you might have your own way or business uh, needs. So how do we make sure that we accommodate this uh, and provide flexibility which allows developers to customize and configure not only the auth authentication flow, but also the login screens based on uh, the specific needs. So because an identity solution needs to be flexible through to handle any scenario, right, at any time. So very quickly, I want to walk, I want to show you how uh, a glimpse of, you know, our very extensible pipeline that provides flexible and customizable framework for managing user authentication and authorization, which is our answer to our developers' need for flexibility. The pipeline is designed to be modular and extensible, allowing you to customize and configure authentication flows to meet your business uh, needs at a global scale. You can bring in your own code into any of these green dots, which are our extension points, and the platform will run and scale your customized code, actually. And we call these green dots action, which is, you will hear this word a few times referred in the conversation today. And this includes the support for social login, SSO, MFA, passwordless login, and, and, and much more, right? 
And then to continue with flexibility, our platform is designed to integrate with a wide range of third-party tools and services. So including identity platforms, user directories, and of course more, because those are all the tech that you already have in your stack and you want to bring it along, right? So we believe seeing is believing. And to make sure that we can see what things that we talked about, I want to invite uh, Sam Bale and our developer advocate to join with me and show our developers um, you know, all the unique needs they have. Sam, what do you say? Absolutely. Let's do this. <laughs> So um, our developers can tailor the authentication pipeline we provide to suit their own needs, the needs of their applications. This is uh, by using actions or the extensibility points, the green dots that Bhavna showed you in the previous slide. Um, and some of these are very easy to use because we have a marketplace that offer out of the box, easily usable marketplace actions. So you don't even need to write custom code. You just go to the marketplace, find something that works for your current problem, install it, and you're good to go. So if there are things like identity proofing um, or biometric multi-factor authentication, maybe you want to allow certain people from certain locations or disallow certain people from certain locations in your application, or send a notification to a dashboard um, when, uh, whenever somebody registers or whenever somebody logs in. Um, these are all things you can do with out-of-the-box marketplace solutions, marketplace actions. You don't even have to write any code. Install them, configure them, and you're good to go. Um, but sometimes you want to go one step further, right? Um, you want to create something that isn't available in the marketplace. So you need to write your own custom logic, your own custom code. And we provide a good solution for that as well. Um, we allow you to write custom JavaScript code. You don't need to host it somewhere. We'll take care of that for you. Um, but by, by writing this custom JavaScript code, um, you can also import NPM modules. You can um, test it. You can um, use our secrets manager to use secrets like API keys for third-party solutions. So you don't have to write them explicitly in your code base. Uh, you can do a lot of things with our, with our uh, online editor. Um, and because we know that sometimes stuff goes wrong, I'm a developer, I might have broken certain things in the past, we also baked in version control, so you can always roll back to a previous version um, and uh, go from there. Um, and if you think that whatever you just wrote, your custom action, is something that the people outside of your company, other companies, other products might also want to use, um, you can also submit it to the marketplace, so they don't have to write that code, they can just install it again as a marketplace action. Um, we're hosting a workshop on this later today, so if you're interested in marketplace, in actions, in extending our authentication pipeline, stick around for this afternoon. Sam, that was all behind the scenes. We have a whole uh, site in front, which is the front door of our user's login application, and we want to make sure that that also is something that you as developers can customize and make it look like yours. So do you have something that you can show for the front Definitely. door? Definitely, yeah. All let's right. show you some, some other things. Um, so um, let's get a look at customizing the login screen um, of your application or your application's front door. Um, our easy-to-use no-code editor allows you to match the style of your login page and all the other pages involved with logging in your users um, so that they match the style of your actual application. So your users do not even know that they have redirected to your Auth0 Auth tenant um, and back. Um, it should be one seamless, one seamless visual uh, part. Um, so you can style it once and we'll make sure that um, the styles will be duplicated across all of the pages. That's a login page, that's a register page, that's forgot password, MFA, and so forth. All of the, the possible pages will have the styles that you have configured in that online no-code editor. And as you can see, um, you can do things from changing colors to um, changing borders and backgrounds and so much more. Uh, you don't need to write any code, we'll make sure that it's performing performant enough because your login page needs to be as fast as possible, right? Um, but we don't stop there. How your page look is only half of the story. Um, how you communicate with your users is the other half. And we allow you to easily customize all text, all labels on these pages um, with support for over 40 languages out of the box. Um, and sometimes you just want to change certain labels. Um, because, well, you don't like what's written in the label or you just want to um, have some greater freedom. And we also allow you to change all of these labels for all of the languages we support um, to the dashboard. 
Um, and we know each application uh, has their own needs. And sometimes you want to identify a user by an email address. Sometimes you want to use something else, like a phone number, for example. And that's all possible as well. We don't lock you into that email identifier constraint. If, it, if a phone number makes more sense to you, by all means, uh, use a phone number. And lastly, we've teased passkeys at our developer keynote at Octane last year. Um, but I want to mention it again, because it is something that I'm actually really, really excited about. Um, and if you're interested in passkeys, you can try it out today in our experimental Alt Zero Labs environment. It's experimental. It's just a preview of what we're building. We're still building on it, and we're planning to add it to our production uh, in the future. Um, but if you want to try it out, it's a way for doing true passwordless phishing resistance um, authentication on the web. So stay tuned for more on that later. Well, thank you, Sam. With these short demos, and of course, I want to plus one and emphasize on the pass keys usage, certainly if you are taking on the passwordless journey, uh, so that you can continue that effort and, 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 and the important aspect of going passwordless. So once you have implemented your authentication journey using universal login, we want to make sure that it is also secure and compliant. And for there as well, as I mentioned, we have your back, right? We will, we, through the security and privacy forward features and capabilities. So we looked at the capabilities in the platform that will help protect your application from attacks. We do a lot to prevent attacks and make it easy for developers, that is you all, to secure implement, uh, securely implement a customer identity cloud using SDKs. But again, we want to empower you further. That's not it, right? So according to our own state of secure identity report that was published last year, based on customer identity cloud data, approximately 90% of web application attacks are caused by credential abuse. That is a big number, and that should concern us all. Bad actors use an arsenal of abuse uh, credentials like fraudulent attacks or registration, credential stuffing, MFA bypass attacks, and just credential stuffing account for 34% of overall traffic and authentication events on our platform. So you can see, and an attack can cost almost an average of more than $6 million a year, which is big amount of money that, money that should rather be invested in our innovation and our teams. So to help protect your code and your business, we have a host of security features in place to help prevent automated attacks. Let me share a few of you today here. And as you can see it in the list, we, have, we can display CAPTCHA challenges uh, for suspicious traffic to verify that a human is attempting to access the authentication. Our bot detection capabilities can attract unique device fingerprints uh, to identify uh, bots and block them if they are trying to access your application. It is powered by machine learning algorithm that can detect patterns of bad behavior and adjust security measures, sometimes even automatically and in real time for you. And of course, we can block traffic from a specific IP address or IP ranges, actually, to prevent excessive traffic that may be indicative of bot traffic. And you also see our back channel logout capabilities also coming soon. So again, we want to we wanna show it to you so that we, we make sure that you definitely believe what we are doing. And it's all part of our platform. So how about we share our audience with, with our audience, Sam? What are these, uh, some of these security features, and how are they helping our developers secure their apps? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so aside from protecting our customers through these security protection measures you just mentioned, um, we also provide guidance and easy-to-use SDKs to prevent security issues on the software implementa implementation level. Um, abstracting all of these complexities, I these identity complexities, and um, making sure that the SDKs take, take care of that um, also makes it harder for developers to make mistakes that they didn't intend to make, but just they happen to make those. Um, and by building on top of open standards, um, we aim to, uh, well, we always try to follow the guidelines of the creators of those standards um, to improve the security. And if some vulnerabilities are discovered with these standards, those standard bodies will also offer guidance on how to mitigate these vulnerabilities so we can easily and securely fix them as soon as they are discovered. Um, our official SDKs 
aim to always be up to date with their latest version of their software, their programming language, or their framework. Because oftentimes these these, these updates they contain security uh, security patches, security fixes, and you want to and you want to implement this in, in your applications as soon as possible. So we also aim to have our SDKs follow those updates to those frameworks and and programming languages. Um, and of course, a good SDK is nothing without good documentation. Our goal is to have the best documentation as possible for our SDKs, so you can go and get started with our SDKs uh, without as much friction as, as you, uh, well, without any friction at all. Um, and lastly, <laughs> whenever we launch some new features, you want to use those features as soon as we launch them. So our SDK teams get hard to work to make sure that the SDKs also support all of the new features that we launch continuously. So you, as the implementers, the developers the, that, working, uh, that are working with us, uh, can use those features as soon as possible in your applications. Um, and our own Martin Walsh will tell us a bit more about the power of SDKs later today. So if you like SDKs, I certainly do because they make my life so much easier. Stick around for Martin's talk. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I know you're awesome. You know you're awesome. But I think now everybody knows you're awesome. So thank you so much. All right. We looked at the capabilities in the platform that will help protect uh, your application from attacks. So we do a lot to prevent attacks and make it easy for developers, that is, you all, to securely implement customer identity cloud using SDKs, but we want to further empower uh, you, right? We, we're not done, that's not it. The attacks on your application are constantly happening. The, these attack patterns are changing, they're evolving, and it's important that for an organization and for you to keep an eye on the kind of attacks that are coming your way. So, I'm happy to announce that last week we released Security Center. Thank you, thank you. Security Center provides real-time monitoring uh, that allows you to observe attacks on your SIAM or login system. And of course, uh, view any anomalies in your traffic pattern using our anomaly detection metrics. And through Security Center, you can conveniently configure our attack mitigation features, features we just talked about, and to secure your login implementation. But hey, Sam is not done yet because he's awesome. He will show us one last demo. One more, promise. One more. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Um, so with the Security Center, uh, we provide an easy to use dashboard that will uh, let you monitor all traffic on your, on your applications, on your all zero tenants, but also uh, let you monitor all of the total threats that we, that we monitor in your all zero tenants, in your applications. Um, we allow you to um, observe threat behavior as well, so we'll give you some insights into how these uh, behaviors are trending um, at the moment or in the past. Um, and we allow you to identify applications that currently might be under attack because, well, attackers usually don't target all applications out there. They have specific targets most of the time. So if they're targeting one of your applications, you'll be able to monitor that through the security center. Um, you'll also be able to track login and sign up traffic because you want to know how many users you have at all times. Um, because, well, that's great. Um, and you can also monitor threats identified by at or attack prevention, prevention measures like bot prevention or MFA. Um, so if we see that there's a lot of bot prevention going on, you can also see that in the security center dashboard. So there's a few of the things that you can see in the security dashboard. More is coming soon, but this is available since last week. Thank you. All right, so we talked about authentication at length, and I think we can keep going on that space, but let's move to authorization as a service, right? And to talk about our author authorization capability and have a look at the future with verifiable credentials, let me invite our Chief Product Officer, Shiv Ramji. Good job. All right, thank you, Bhavna, for kicking us off, and thanks to Sam for the amazing demos. First off, just a shout out to all the live and in-person audiences. Thank you for attending. We have quite a few watch parties, and I'm glad a lot of you tuned in this morning for, for this session. So a big round of applause to everybody. <laughs> now, I am really excited uh, to talk about um, authorization. So Bhavna kicked off this morning with a ton of updates on what we're doing with authentication, right? So all the features and all the capabilities and make your life easy as a developer. Well, I want to talk about 
um, where authorization is going. And why is this important? Why am I excited? I believe authorization is essentially where authentication was just about a decade ago. So what do I mean by that? Today, like, just like a decade ago, a lot of people today solve authorization by essentially building it themselves, right? And it often starts out by a very simple problem, basic rule sets, and grows into a pretty hairy problem, a problem very, very quickly. And a lot of uh, uh, users or developers or customers today essentially build their own solution and typically deploy in their own data centers. But that is all about to change. With the ability of the cloud now that gives you low latency, highly available and highly scalable solutions, we can now deliver an authorization service that can take all of that pain away from you. But it's not just about the cloud's ability to solve this for us. It's also about your growing use cases. How many of you use Google Workspaces or you know, share documents? I see a lot of hands going up. Now, you, you know this for yourself. Typically, you, know, you, you create a new document, you may want to share it with one user initially. But very quickly, you may want to share it with an alias, with a distribution list, with a group, with internal teams, with external teams. Very quickly, the authorization problem explodes. And it's really, really hard to manage all of this on your own. So I'm really excited to talk about how we're uh, trying to solve uh, this problem. So, sorry, I skipped. Uh, there we go. That's a video. Okay. So open. If we, we're solving this solution, we're solving this problem by essentially bringing our own uh, fine-grained authorization service um, to life. Essentially, Open FGA is a relationship-based access control solution that we're building. And we're building it as an open source project. And recently, this was added to the Cloud Native Com uh, Computing Foundation, or CNCF, uh, as an open source project with lots of contributors and interests in the developer community. Now, we're also working on a managed version of this so that we can take all of the pain of hosting, updating, patching, securing, and scaling away from you so that you, you can just think about the application and the types of uh, relationships that you want to you wanna set up. Now, our fine-grained authorization solution really empowers you as developers to set up fine-grained access controls as much as you want. So you can, you can use all of your typical uh, solutions, such as role-based access control. That can be easily configured. Uh, some of you may want to be doing attribute-based access control. You can also achieve that. So regardless of what your use case is or regardless of how simple you start out and how complex you're, you're growing, we have the solution to, um, to help you with those, with those needs. And what's really, really cool is the modeling language you know, that's powering all this can be used to define these relationships very, very easily. And once you have some data into the model uh, that you can run against your authorization uh, setup that you have, the powerful engine can quickly uh, look for relationships and make sure that there is consistent access across the different um, access decisions that are made across your, your applications. And what's really nice is because it's a centralized authorization engine, it really makes authorization rules explicit and standardizes how authorization works across your applications, across your stacks, and frankly, across your company. Now, later today, there will be a deeper dive on this topic uh, led by Adrian. So if you're, if you're interested in this, uh, I recommend that you stick around and attend uh, that session. Now, um, as I mentioned, we have open sourced our core engine called OpenFGA. Uh, really excited to share that we launched OpenFGA uh, version 1 uh, just about a month ago at KubeCon. Uh, on April uh, 18th. And so please check it out. You can, you can try out the product now. And as I'd mentioned earlier, our vision is to really empower you as developers to think uh, about solving authorization problem all the way from coarse grain to fine grain. And you may be thinking, well, why, why should I think about this problem? Well, according to Okta's recent Business at Work uh, report, organizations that have more than 2,000 employees have an average of about 200 applications. That's the average, and this is growing 10% year over year. Now, many of you can probably relate with this problem. 
that not only do you have a growing number of applications, you have all of these complex rules and policies that you have to keep up and maintain. So we believe now is a good time for sort of a next generation fine grain um, authorization solution can really help uh, you as developers to manage the complexity, meaning the number of apps that you have to deal with, but also stay ahead of all of the complex rule sets and policies that you want to you wanna deliver. The other interesting and cool thing that we're also working on is that we have an identity governance and, and, and uh, access management solution too from Okta. Over time, we will easily also connect our fine grain authorization solution with IGA. So if you are looking for auditing after you have set up all your permissions, you're also able to do that out of the, out of the box. So we believe this is a, have, will have a really, really big impact um, on teams that are building that have to maintain so many applications that have all these complex rule sets. But also, if you are a developer building a SaaS product and selling to enterprise customers, this solution will also help you manage the, the complexity um, uh, that you may have with, with authorization. So as sort of Bana had mentioned, we're constantly obsessing on how to solve uh, for all of your complex uh, identity needs. We talked about authentication. We have lots of updates there today for you. Um, I just talked about authorization and authorization as a service and the, the solutions we have for you. And the next topic that I want to talk about is um, sort of the evolution of verifiable credentials. Um, so as you all know, our lives continue to shift um, uh, online in so many ways. Now, many of us are very familiar with, you know, it's a login box, I'm creating an app, it's a web app, it's a mobile app. I want to give users a seamless login experience, make sure that it's secure, it's privacy compliant. And all of that is great if you're working within the confines of an online ecosystem. But we all know there is a lot of identity data that's still locked up in physical formats. And what's, a, what's an example of that? Well, our passports, our driver's license, your medical insurance card, and on and on. So there's a lot, you, you know, your, your uh, degrees and certificates from, from um, the schools that you went through. There's a lot of data that's still locked up in offline systems. So what verifiable credentials allow you to do is that, you know, they are essentially a secure and a decentralized way to prove your identity online. So essentially, they allow you to take an identity or an artifact that is locked up in this offline format. You can bring it online for purposes of identifying uh, who you are. Now, verifiable credentials are essentially based on this idea of self-sovereign identity, which means that the individuals really have full control over their identity and often saved either in a wallet, on your phone, um, and essentially allowing you to share uh, only with, with those apps and people that you want to share this information with. Now, there are a wide range of potential applications uh, for this. So for example, a common thing is you can use this to verify your age. Now, why would you want to do that with a certain products such as um, uh, regulated products such as uh, alcohol and tobacco that, where they do need to verify your age, right? So you can do that verification very, very easily if you have this digital verifiable credential available on your application. And what I think is really interesting is that instead of you sharing your full ID and, um, and birthday and all of those details, you can essentially just say, hey, I can prove that I'm uh, over the age of 18, right? Without giving all sorts of private and personal information out. But it's not just for age verification. There are governments that are thinking about how do I provide services to our citizens, right? So that's another interesting application. I talked about healthcare, like a lot of healthcare is cumbersome and it's offline. What if we could bring all of that online? Imagine if you can share your health record safely, digitally and safely, and share only the information that you need, uh, that, the, that the service provider needs to ensure uh, that you get the type of medical outcomes that you want. So I believe that the, the possibilities here uh, are endless and there are so many use cases that will, that will emerge. Um, 
And so we're really excited to closely be experimenting in this space um, and also releasing Playground so that as a developer, you can experiment and learn um, about the products and the way they were thinking about building them. Now, you may also be thinking, well, okay, you know, where do I see this? Like, is this really happening? And we're starting to see some early signs um, of these experiences. So the example I want to talk about is um, we recently partnered with Singapore's National Digital Identification Service called SyncPass to essentially easily integrate SyncPass QR login with universal uh, with our universal login feature that's available uh, in the customer identity cloud. Essentially, this capability allows SyncPass users to access a broad set of business and government services with the same convenience of essentially a passwordless experience. Now, this implementation isn't the ideal verifiable credentials implementation I should call out, but it gives you an early glimpse into what's possible with digital credentials and ultimately what's possible with verifiable uh, credentials. And we believe this will continue to evolve rapidly. Um, you can see we have another customer uh, that's also doing this for, for, for their citizens. Um, again, it's a G20 country and a provincial government that's providing all of their digital services for their citizens through verifiable credentials. So we're starting to see early glimpses and deployments of this technology, and that we are really excited to continue the innovation in this space and excited to provide the right abstractions so that you as a developer don't have to worry about all of the technical implementations under the hood, but you get the value of delivering this seamless experience uh, to your customer. There is gonna be a deeper dive on verifiable credentials too uh, later uh, today. Uh, if you get a chance, please attend a session led by Sam Frank and he will tell you more about the work that we're doing with verifiable uh, credentials. And so this is just a glimpse of all the innovations um, in areas that we're working on to solve uh, for identity. And I hope you attend the sessions uh, later today. Back to you, Bhavna. All right. Thanks, Richard. All right. Well, I hope you all saw the fun stuff we get to work with, but we also bring it to you today. So the fun stuff you all get to work with today, right? And... Um, as Shiv just said, you know, sharing the latest and the authorization verifiable credentials with OpenFG, I want to call out the, the open source version that Shiv just mentioned and talked about. We are seeing great traction from our developer community. So do look, at, look for it. And if you love to engage uh, in that space, you know, uh, engage with us. We are, uh, our developer community is actively contributing to this space. And of course, uh, uh, it's enriching our authorization uh, offering. This morning, let's bring it all home. And, and this morning, we, we talked about and looked at how Okta can help you take control of your identity. So our flexible and secure solution, uh, authentication solution to make sure, make sure that every application is securely authenticated and its authenticated, uh, authentication needs are served. Uh, how you can take control of your application's authorization uh, uh, to the next level with FGA. And how you can manage credentials uh, in the future with verifiable credentials, which is the upcoming market for us. So with that, and all the information and the full day of expert deep dives, I hope you all have what you need to take control of identity. And wait, isn't it? But wait. Uh, the conversation of identity doesn't end today. So I want to call this out, very important. This conversation of identity that you all are joining does not end today. We invite you all to our Octane event, which is our big um, annual customer event. And starting this year, we are actually bringing a developer track to this event. And we will have developer-focused sessions, architectural conversation, whiteboarding, as well as if you have your code where you need feedback, bring your code on. And we'll have experts in the space to give you suggestions, feedbacks, and, and, and recommendations. So a lot that's going, uh, that's, that will happen, and we'll have special tickets for our de developer friends. So keep an eye out for the email to come to you, or, or you can visit the link uh, that's on the slide. Uh, and we all hope to see you in person there. So thank you. <laughs>